guys, welcome to Grammar and Writing, Lesson 48. We're going to get started. Now notice there's no vocabulary today. I decided to go ahead and skip vocabulary for the day. Woohoo, right? So no vocabulary today. Happy early Thanksgiving. We're talking about semicolons and colons. So a semicolon, remember what that looks like? Let me get my handy dandy pen out here. A semicolon is a dot on top of a comma. That's a semicolon. So we use a semicolon between independent clauses. That means a simple sentence that is joined without a coordinating conjunction. For example, Joe enjoys hockey. He plays every weekend. Here's one sentence. Joe, en whoop, Joe enjoys hockey. Here's the next sentence. He plays every weekend. So you have two sentences, there's no conjunction. So to join them into one sentence, you need a semicolon. All right, pretty simple, right? It's stronger than a comma, much stronger than a comma, so it can be on its own without a conjunction. We also use a semicolon between items in a series if the items themselves, if the items themselves contain commas. For example, over the years, Mr. Sanders has visited Paris, France, Tokyo, Japan, and Cairo, Egypt. Okay, he's not saying he visited Paris, and he visited France, and he visited Tokyo, because that doesn't make any sense. He visited Paris, France, right? Paris is in France, so we separate the city and the country with a comma. Tokyo is in Japan, city and country separated with a comma, and Cairo is in Egypt, city and country separated with a comma. So the list is Paris, France, semicolon, Tokyo, Japan, semicolon, and Cairo, Egypt. So in order to show that it's not the list of Paris, France, Tokyo, Cairo, Egypt, it's Paris, France. Tokyo, Japan, and Cairo, Egypt. All right, now let's talk about the colon. So the semicolon is a dot on top and a comma on the bottom. A colon, two dots, okay? So we use the colon before listed items, especially with the following or as follows. For example, awards were given to the following students. And now we're going to start a list. So to show that we are kind of stopping the sentence and starting our list, we put a colon right there. Awards were given to the following students, Madison, Ethan, Matthew, and Isabella. So we have a colon right before a list when especially um, the clue words to show you that you need that would be when you have the following or as follows. Because really what happens is that you're ending your sentence and you're just giving a list. That's why you would need um, the colon. We didn't need a colon in the last sentence because the list was part of the sentence. All right, we also use a colon between a chapter and a verse, an hour and a minute, and after the salutation of a business letter. Salutation, remember, is a greeting. It's how you start it. So when you have a reference, you need to put a colon between the chapter and the verse. John 3, 16, so John 3, colon 16. 8 a.m. 8 is the hour. And the zeros would be the minutes. So we need to separate the hour and the minutes. Dear sir, colon. Because this is a business letter, it's more formal. So we need the colon before we start. What do, you, what do you use in a friendly letter? What do, you, what do you use after the salutation of a friendly letter? Do you remember? Comma, that's right. Okay, that is actually it for the lesson. So your homework today is to complete language C, page 62, think B. Again, I'm not gonna give, do any examples with you, because I think you got this. But let me know if there's any sentences that you're confused, you can't figure out where you should put a colon or a semicolon. Because that's all that the directions say, add colons and semicolons where needed in the following sentences. 
oh here let me let me go over number one with you all right so you just have to listen it's not going to be up there these are my favorite subjects bible english and arithmetic where where should you put a colon or a semicolon in this sentence right after subjects that's right because you're stopping the sentence and starting the list it's kind of a part these are my favorite subjects bible english and arithmetic it doesn't flow easily so you need these are my favorite subjects colon bible english and arithmetic okay all righty we are good to go that's it for today so this is probably the shortest grammar lesson we've ever had enjoy happy thanksgiving I will see you next time. Bye.